ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you the official Barry D. Brick clothing line. Oh, JoJo pose. It is absolutely glorious, is it not? We have here this glorious sweater, which is based off of Zoro's Enma, with the purple scabbard and the lines and little tassels here. Once again, thanks to Maggie from New Zealand for knitting and designing these for Barry. And then back here, we have Clone Barry 001 rocking the original Christmas uh, sweater and scarf combo, because the plushie was designed with the exact dimensions for the actual bricks, so they actually fit rather well. Um, if you have a brick companion, and that brick companion does not have clothing, does not have a fashionable sweater to wear, something's wrong. You need to knit that brick a sweater immediately. <laughs> I know I've already said it before in another video, but this is where we're at. We're, we're knitting sweaters for bricks. Okay, at any rate, hey everybody, how you doing? Teching Barry, everything back again. Um, today we're going to be talking about Momo's Devil Fruit. Now, it's interesting, I've made videos about, you know, the scabbards and talking about, like, Momo's, like, future in the story, you know, after Kaido and Orochi were defeated, you know, Momo, is he going to become the next Shogun? You know, what's up with his legacy and, you know, related to Odin and everything like that? Um, but today we're going to be talking specifically about his Devil Fruit, the artificial Devil Fruit that was created by Vegapunk, left on Punk Hazard, deemed a failure which allows him to transform into a Chinese dragon, uh, which is not dissimilar to Kaido's Seiryu, his Uo Uo no Mi model Seiryu. There are definitely similarities there, it's just the fact that Momo's is much, much, much weaker. Um, however, is that because he's a child, or is that because the fruit itself was a failure? We don't really know that, and this was brought up in the last chapter. Uh, we had one scene where Yamato, Momo, and Shinobu were running around the, uh, the tower, and Momo, you know, because he's just completely you know, racked with all this, um, you know, responsibility he has, and he feels like he hasn't measured up to his father, and he's just like, I'm not a brave samurai, and he turns into the dragon inside of Yamato's clothing, and he just pops out, and then Yamato's like, oh, is he an eel? Okay, this is a thing. Um, and then right after that, we had a scene with the Cypher Pole Zero that are also in the manor, in like some random room that's just, you know, I guess a bunker that's reinforced from all the damage that's going on outside. They seem pretty chill where they're at. Where we have that, um, I would call him a random member of the CP0, but we see this guy so often with the mask and everything. So I'm assuming he is the leader. If not, he's really high up there in the echelon. Uh, we know that Rob Lucci or Spondum are not the leaders of CP0. They're just regular soldiers. So there has to be a leader or at least maybe like a captain, vice captain sort of deal. I don't know. But this guy definitely seems to be up there. And um, he was just talking about how it was really fortunate that the Devil Fruit... That that uh, Vegapunk created that was based on Kaido's lineage factor or his DNA. So that was confirmed. It was confirmed already that uh, Kaido had been captured by the Marines and other Yonko and his enemies at various points throughout his life. Um, they just couldn't finish him off, okay, because of his, like, indestructibility. They just couldn't do anything to finish him. And eventually, I guess he either broke free or he was rescued. But still, the fact remains, he was captured quite a bit. You know, his uh, pirate record is not like, you know, perfect victories all around. I'm not really sure how the Marines managed to capture him during this particular instance. Maybe they just laid out a bunch of sake for him and they just, like, they drugged it or something and he passed out and they're like, okay, haul him into Vegapunk's lab. We gotta, we gotta conduct some tests before he wakes back up. And Vegapunk somehow managed to get a syringe into him or something, managed to extract his blood and get a sample of his uh, lineage factor or his DNA. And using that sample, Vegapunk was able to create this devil fruit. Now, it's extremely important to mention this devil fruit, while it it is an artificial devil fruit is not a smile, okay? Smiles, which is what we see most often in the story and that are used prominently by Kaido's crew, the Beast Pirates, were manufactured at Dressrosa at the, uh, the Smile Factory, grown by the Tontadas, and they were produced using a substance called SAD, or SAD, and this substance, which was like green slime goo, was manufactured by Caesar Clown at Punk Hazard, okay? Now, we do not know the full process for, you know, how Vegapunk made his fruit, uh, but I'm assuming, considering Caesar Clown worked for Vegapunk, and they were, you know, uh, you know, uh, lab partners for as long as they were, uh, probably the process is somewhat similar. You know, maybe SAD was still involved and everything like that, uh, but for one reason or another, Vegapunk decided to scrap the project, and he left the one, uh, one devil fruit that he created, Momo's Dragon Fruit, on Punk Hazard, okay? And then Caesar Clown, you know, that whole 
explosion happened, Caesar left, and then he came back a little later when the island was deserted, and he set up his own, like, operation and everything, and he began to mass-produce the SAD to ship off to Doflamingo, and then Doflamingo used the enslaved uh, Tontadas in order to um, cultivate the smiles, which he then shipped off to Kaido, okay? So basically what I'm assuming is that these smiles are the very rushed, mass-produced uh, variant of Vegapunk's original fruit, okay? You know Caesar took a bunch of shortcuts. He probably cut around some corners in order to manufacture as many of these things, right? And they have a lot of faults. The biggest one is only 10% of them actually give you a power. 90% uh, of the people that eat them become, you know, powerless, still weak to the water, and are incapable of expressing their emotions other than laughter, okay? So that's a major, you know, downside. Also, the ones, the, the gifters that even do receive the power, the 10%, um, they can't control how the power is going to manifest. I don't even know if they can control what animal they're going to get, all right? It's just like, okay, even if they can narrow it down, even they like, okay, this is a horse smile. You can either turn into a badass centaur like Speed, or you could literally turn into like Bojack Horseman with just like a horse head. You know what I mean? Like you don't know what you're going to get. A horse's ass could literally just pop out of your back and that could just be your power, right? You just don't know how this is going to go, right? So uh, there's a lot of downsides with that. Now, when it comes to Vegapunk's fruit, it does look slightly different from the smiles. It still has the ring pattern, which most Devil Fruits, the original Devil Fruits, have the swirly pattern. Um, so that's a difference there. However, However, the coloring as well as the stem, I think Vegapunk's uh, stem for his fruit is like more of a swirl, more similar to a regular devil fruit, um, and the smiles are more like an apple, like a short stem kind of deal. So there's like subtle differences, but Oda definitely did put them there. So while Momo's fruit is definitely not perfect, um, the major downsides with the dragon that he turns into is number one, he can't seem to really control the transformation all too much. Whenever he gets really, you know, like, like a lot of anxiety or whatever, he just seems to transform into the dragon uh, form and he can't, you know, turn back automatically. This seems to be a thing like when regular zone uh, users eat their fruit, uh, they might be a bit inexperienced at first, uh, like Kaku couldn't really control going into his hybrid form or his full giraffe form, but he seemed to get the hang of that pretty early on. Same thing with Chopper when he first ate his human-human fruit. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but not much. Uh, Momo's had his fruit for, you know, several weeks at this point, maybe several months, depending on the timelines and everything, and he, see he still has a really hard time of controlling it. Also, uh, from what we understand so far, it doesn't have a hybrid form. It might, it's just so unstable, we haven't seen it yet. Uh, Momo is either in his human form, or he goes into his full dragon form, okay? And it seems like at random intervals that that happens. Um, Momo is still weak to water, because there was a moment uh, when they were on Zoe, when they got swept away by the, uh, the water current, and Nami had to swim in after him, and she's like, you know, oh, these Devil Fruit users, they're so troubling, so that's still the same weakness as every other Devil Fruit, even the same weakness weakness that extends to the smiles. Um, they're weak to water. Um, Momo is able to create flame clouds, the same as Kaido, those little clouds that allow him to like use as stepping stones. The flaming clouds are not actually flames like Kaido's are. Like with Kaido, it really looks like he's just entirely shrouded by flame. And when he wrapped Onigashima around with the clouds, they were like wrapping in flames, okay? Momo's really are just like clouds that he can use as like platforms to like walk in the air. Very useful, certainly, but it also seems to take a lot out of him. Uh, when Luffy used this power on Punk Hazard to try to escape the trash compactor. They managed to get out, but I remember, you know, uh, Momo was really exhausted after using his ability to make so many clouds. Likewise, Momo does not have any breath weapons like Kaido does. Kaido has a slew of different breath weapons at his disposal. He's got his Boro breath, which is like the standard fire, explosive breath, uh, like you see a lot of Western dragons, you know, depicted doing. And then you also have the lightning bolt breath. He used that against the scabbards. He also has the Kaifu, which is destructive wind, which is like a cutting wind blade breath. Uh, then he also has, uh, not a breath weapon, but he has his Tatsumaki, which is literally Dragon Twister. And then he has another upgraded form of that, uh, Dragon Twister Kaifu, which is the Dragon Twister Destructive Wind, which combines the Twister with the breath that shoots out the lightning, not the lightning, the, uh, the Wind Blades. Although I would assume Kaido could do any combination of that. He can do the Tatsumaki, the Dragon Twister, while firing off a Boro Breath. So you have a, a flaming fireball Dragon Twister, or a, you know, lightning bolt 
adult dragon twister. Like, Kaido has a lot of stuff in his repertoire, and Momo simply, from what we understand so far, really doesn't have any offensive capabilities with his fruit. I mean, he's like an eel dragon. I mean, he's like a large snake, basically. He could be like a boa constrictor. He could maybe wrap around you and stuff. Maybe that's a weapon. He has teeth. He has claws and teeth and fangs. He could, like, bite you or whatever. But, um, you know, that doesn't really seem to be very effective, okay? So what the point here, though, is, and what the CP0 member mentioned to the others was, like, it's very fortunate that Vegapunk's Devil Fruit was, in fact, a failure. And I think the reasoning behind that was like, well, let's say it survived the explosion at Punk Hazard. And let's say somebody did end up eating it. You know, now from CP Zero's perspective, that's a very unlikely thing to happen. Uh, we all know, of course, it did happen. And, you know, Momo's the one that ate it. Um, but he's like, even if somebody did eat the fruit and they did get the powers of the dragon, it's a failure and that's good because otherwise we might have a full-fledged dragon on our hands here on the same level of Kaido. You know that's what the world government was trying to do. Take Kaido, who at this point is the strongest zone user in the entire world. I mean, even when you factor in other mythical zone users, like, yeah, you do, you got Marco and you got Sengoku. I mean, Sengoku has a zone, he can turn into a Buddha. I would probably argue if the only other zone user in the entire world that could contend with Kaido in a one-on-one -on -one fight would probably be Sengoku with his zone, unless somebody else, you know, is revealed, like, Blackbeard has the Severus or whatever, but for right now, all we know of really canonically is, um, I think Sengoku with the zone, that would be maybe a match for Kaido, uh, but even then, we don't know much what the Buddha can do, and Sengoku's getting on in years, and freaking Kaido, he could do all the crazy stuff I just explained, right? So even in that matchup, I would maybe still put my money on Kaido with his dragon powers, right? So, certainly one of, if not the strongest zone users in the entire world, drag him into the freaking lab, get some of his blood, and like, hey, Vegapunk, make an artificial devil fruit, make a copy of uh, Kaido's so we can give it to somebody else, right? And so somebody on the government payroll, one of the marines, or one of the admirals, or something, and then we can rule the world, right? And so... Why was it considered a failure? Why did Vegapunk consider this a failure? Like I said, there's a lot of downsides with Momo's fruit. Probably the biggest one, like I said, is the unstable nature of transforming. Um, that might be something that is catered to the failure part of it, okay? But as for everything else, like the size of the dragon, the fact that Momo can't use breath weapons, the fact that Momo's flaming clouds are not like as powerful as Kaido's, that might just be related to his inexperience and his age. He's only eight years old, right? If Momo trained with this fruit over the years, he might be able to fire off a Boro breath. He might grow larger. He might be able to do the Tatsumaki and the lightning bolts and everything and summon actual flaming clouds the same as Kaido, right? If he trained with it, right? But yeah, the fact that he can't really maintain the transformations and he doesn't really seem to have a hybrid form yet, although it did take a while for us to see Kaido's hybrid form as well, so maybe that'll tie back into it in some way. I don't know. Maybe the the hybrid form of the dragon fruit is just really hard to maintain. Maybe there's some extra added um, negative to that. That's the reason Kaido does, doesn't even use it very often. It might be something like that. Who knows? And, you know, if Momo, it, it might be also a thing like it's directly tied to his emotions, right? So if he really feels, like, you know, upset about not being able to live up to his father's legacy and he feels useless and he has, a, like, a panic attack or whatever, it could be a thing where he just loses control. So this is a situation where rather than maybe training the fruit, maybe if Momo, you know, learns to, like, I don't know, calm down and meditate and, like, focus and whatever, maybe at that point Momo can control his forms a little better. He probably would never be as effective at it as other zones. Like, there's been plenty of times when Chopper was in the middle of a fight. I think when Chopper was fighting um, uh, Chess Marimo on Drum Island, and I think also against Kumadori he did this, you know, where there's, like, a bunch of attacks coming at Chopper, and Chopper is just, like, you know, turning in and out of his forms, like, as the attacks are coming in, like, you know, brain point, dodge the attack, and then heavy point, and then brain point again, and then walk point, no, clone berry, you know, so Chopper had really good handle on his Devil Fruit, he can switch back and forth between the forms like that, a lot of other zones we've seen that could do that at a moment's notice, Momo might never get to that level, but 
even with that restraint, even with that handicap, with that weakness of the fruit, he might still be able to get really, really strong using it. If he trains and then like meditates or whatever, it's just that he would have to learn how to activate his dragon fruit in a different way than Kaido does, or a different way from a lot of zones. So it's like when, when Momo, let's say Momo trains for 20 years, okay, so he's 28 years old and he gets super strong, he can actually turn into a decently sized dragon and he can fire fire breath and everything like that. Um, it's just that when he wants to go dragon, he can't just snap his fingers and turn into a dragon. He has to be like, okay, it's time for me to turn into a dragon. I shall now focus in my soul. Hoo! And then he like opens his eyes and his eyes go into a dragon and then he transforms. You know, it just takes a little bit more of effort to go into the form and a different technique. So it's more like maybe when Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk, you know, a little bit more effort. He could still be really, really strong because I'm interested in knowing what exactly did Vegapunk tell the government about why it was a failure, right? Because I don't think like Vegapunk's just going to walk up to the government and be like, well, I worked on that uh, artificial dragon duck fish fruit you wanted me to do. And the government's like, oh, yes, we're very interested in how that turned out. How did it turn out? He's like... Well, uh, yeah, sorry to tell you, it was, uh, it was a failure. I don't think the government would just be like, ah, dang, it was a failure. All right, well, throw it in the trash. Okay, moving on to the next project. We're gonna try to, um, build a giant conveyor belt that's run by slaves underneath Marijua. Well, okay, that's on the list. That's what we're doing next. No, they wouldn't just move on to the next project. They'd be like, okay explain why it's a failure what about it doesn't work here's the big question this is just something i don't know i mean science might be able to explain it but like how do you know the devil fruit is a failure if no one ate the devil fruit yet so vegapunk takes some of kaido's dna and does science and then makes a fruit and he just like yeah it's a failure sorry he didn't eat it. Nobody ate it. Momo was the first person to eat it. It didn't have any bite marks in it beforehand. Like, even if you want to say because it's an artificial fruit, it works differently. Like, maybe more than one person could get the power if they bit into it, the same fruit. But there were no bites in that fruit. Like, Momo was the first person to eat it, okay? So, I guess you'd have to hook it up to a devil fruit meter. It was some sort of, like, like a Geiger counter, but for devil fruits, it just, like... Yeah, nope, sorry, it's a failure. It's not going to work, right? I feel like the government would be like, Vegapunk, what about it is a failure? You need to tell us. And Vegapunk would just be like, what? Like, he'd be like, oh, yeah, um, it's... It's, it's a lot with like, the parameters and the, the DNA. Uh, you don't know what that is. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of science mumbo jumbo, uh, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. You just, you wouldn't understand, okay? It's just, I'm the scientist here. I say it's a failure. If you don't want to trust me, that's fine. And he's like, okay, whatever. Yeah, fine. It's a failure. And then they just left. Um, I find that a little weird. So I, I want to know exactly. Uh, maybe even, like, Vegapunk could actually appear in the story and explain this. That would be the best case scenario. But, you know, why it was a failure. I hope if it... The reason it's a failure, I hope it's just because of that reason. Like, the unstable forms. Um, you know, I hope it's not something, like, really dire. I hope it's not like, well... You could turn into a dragon, it's a little unstable, but you can turn into a dragon, and with enough training, you could even probably fly and shoot fire. Uh, the problem is, eventually, it's going to break your body down, and you're only going to survive, like, maybe a few years with the fruit, and then you just die. You know, that, that would be a really shitty drawback with the fruit, especially be like the titan power, right? You know, it'd just be like, yeah, you can use this power for, like, 13 years, and then after that, it literally, like, destroys you and just liquefies your insides in a horrible, horrible way, and and you die, you know, uh, it probably wouldn't be 13 years, if it was deemed a failure, it might only be a, a little while, because Momo ate this devil fruit, like, right before the Punk Hazard arc, you know, right before the Straw Hats arrived, that's when Momo ate that fruit, and that was only a few months ago, so if there's any kind of long-term, um, detriment to the dragon fruit that Vegapunk created, uh, or maybe he was afraid of, he wasn't 100% sure, but he's just like, yeah, according to this data, yeah, it'll turn you into a dragon, but, uh, yeah, you might only live, like, a year or something, and then you're gonna have some serious downsides to this. 
if there's something like that, we just, not enough time has passed for us to really know about it yet. So I'm really hoping it's nothing like that. That would really suck, you know? That would suck. That would be like, oh no, Momo is going to die. All right, well, we got to bring him to Dr. Vegapunk to get the cure. I'm like, okay, at least that would introduce Vegapunk in the story, right? Um, that would also kind of screw up the whole nature of like, like the whole point of this, the whole point of Wano, really the whole point of like all the arcs leading up to this is defeating Kaido, getting rid of Orochi and having the, uh, the shogunate of Wano return to the Kozuki clan, which is represented by Momo, the heir, right? So that'd be a little weird if it's just like, all right, we defeated Kaido, we defeated Orochi, but uh, now we have to take Momo to Vegapunk to get cured for some reason, you know, because of he consumed the devil fruit. Although, don't, don't say that's too ridiculous. Maybe not Momo going to Vegapunk, but Vegapunk coming to Wano. That might not be too ridiculous right there, because there's a few things going on here, keep in mind. We got the SSG which Vegapunk is essentially heading up right now. Vegapunk and Sentomaru and all the pacifistas and everything are this new specialized science group that the world government is um, trying to replace the Shishibukai with. So that's something going it would make sense why Vegapunk would want to be like, all right, well, I've, I've made all these SSG battleships, like these automated battleships, like this automated fleet uh, with science. Um, I want to be there for their maiden journey. I want to be out there on the ship to make sure they all work right and everything. And he has like an army of pacifistas with him. So he could go to Wano that way. Wano has a lot of resources and stuff like Sea Prism. The government is very interested in that. The Marines are interested in that. It's like you know, the Marines are like, well, they're not allied with the world government, so we really don't get involved. We have enough on our plate right now with the warlords and everything plus all the other yonko like blackbeard and everything the reverie just wrapped up so i know akainu did say that you know we're not going to get involved with wano but they might still get involved with wano especially if it's like a higher up if it's like we know cp0 is right there and we know cp0 is definitely relaying information back to the gorosei back to im sama eventually right like because they're in wano they're not just sitting there like sipping tea they're probably relaying the information back to freaking headquarters like as they as we speak right now like yeah so uh big mom's here and uh, Kaido turned into a dragon and went up to the roof, and now he's fighting Luffy, Kid, and Law. And then Queen's using some virus crap on the floor. Yeah, we'll keep you updated, right? And so it might get to a situation where the Gorosei, Lee, or Eam, tells the Gorosei to order, uh, to order the Marines to order the fleet admiral, Sakazuki, to just, like, invade Wano. Wait until the battle's over. Wait until Kaido and Big Mom look like they're about to be defeated. And Luffy and everybody is also kind of, like, they're even if they win, they're going to be severely wounded. I mean, they're not going to get out of this, you know, uh, wound-free. Um, you know, so after everything is said and done, everyone's going to be beaten down. And then, boom, that's when the Marines show up because the Gorosei ordered them to. And maybe Vegapunk's going to be part of that. And Vegapunk... Wow, I mean, that would be really cool to see Vegapunk at the end of Wano. Because not only could Vegapunk meet Momo and see, like, okay, you're the one that ate my artificial devil fruit. I need to, I, I, I need to ask you some questions here, you know, you know, for science, you know, like, how does it work, you know, can you breathe fire, you know, whatever, do you have any headaches when you transform, you know, like, so Vegapunk's gonna be interested in that, and then also, the smiles! The entirety of Wano, you got Ebisu Town and everything, all the smiles that Orochi, uh, the failed smiles that he fed to the citizens, and they're all laughing and cheering, and there's like this, um, like this, uh, like ba basically altered their brain with the power, like brain damage or something. Maybe Vegapunk, if there's anybody on this planet that would be able to help them. I mean, maybe Law and Chopper could help them. You know, Chopper's a great doctor. Law is a surgeon, especially if it involves neurosurgery. I mean, that's Law's the guy for the job there. But Vegapunk's the one that actually probably developed the SAD, um, you know, developed the concept of creating an artificial devil fruit from the beginning. So he might actually be able to do something about this. He might actually be able, if there's any uh, drawbacks with Momo, he'll be able to tell him and maybe fix them and because his science has definitely improved since then. And then also he might be able to heal all the people of the, uh, the, the the citizens of Wano to like cure their um, their uh, ailments so they can actually express their emotions again, right? So if anybody could do it, it'd be Vegapunk, right? So Vegapunk coming to... Uh, Momo going to Vegapunk, maybe not too likely. Vegapunk coming to Wano is not a ridiculous idea. Also, just throwing this out there, after the end of Wano, we're going to be kicking off the final saga of One Piece. Not the final arc, the final saga, but we're getting into the last part of the story now, okay? We still got a lot of stuff to do. We still got Elbath, and then there's Lodestar, and Laugh Tale, of course, and some big epic war that happens, you know, right before they get to Laugh Tale, or right after they get to Laugh Tale. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on, but... What other point in the story is Vegapunk going to make his grand entrance, right? Because it's been over a decade now, right? If there was any a moment where Vegapunk should show up 
probably should have been during the Punk Hazard arc, but right now, it would be like, after Wano's over, and we're moving into the final saga, boom, Vegapunk should show up right there, either at the tail end of Wano, or at the beginning of this final saga. That would be, like, the perfect time to introduce him, uh, this last big major character, you know, if you're really going to go ahead with it. I mean, there'll be other major characters as well, but, yeah. So, um, what do you guys think about Momo's Fruit? I, I find it, um... I find it hard to believe, like, it's going to be extremely powerful during this arc. Like, the CP0 member was like, I, I'm glad it was uh, a defective uh, version of the Artificial Zone. But it's like, oh, well, what if Momo actually can get super badass? You know, those are those, are those theories that involving the time fruit or something, you could, like, you know, increase Momo's age to a point in his future where he's, like, super strong and he's got the, you know, the, the dragon and everything like that. Uh, that could undermine the plot, most definitely, you know, because, you know, that's maybe not exactly with Momo's character and what his, like, what Oda's trying to do right now with, like, okay, everyone's looking up to me, but I'm not my father, so that might be something else there. Not really sure how that would go down. Um... But, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be super relevant right now in terms of, like, battle strength. But in terms that it is there, and he has this power, that might be... It might be crucial to defeating Kaido. There might be something they find out about Momo's Devil Fruit that is, like, a critical weakness that also applies to Kaido's Devil Fruit. Like, the hybrid thing. Like, you know, Momo... Somebody might ask, like, Shinobu or somebody might ask him, like, can you turn into, like, a, a half-human, half-dragon like a lot of these other zones can? And Momo's like, oh, I tried that, but I get really exhausted when I do that. Like, it really drains me. And so maybe that might not be something just specific for his artificial. That might be, like, the original model it's designed off of, the Seiryu model, Uo Uo no Mi. That might also have a problem. So it's just, like, Kaido's using his hybrid, but he can't use it for very long. Or if he gets defeated in that form, he's down for for the count he can't get back up or something maybe maybe something like that'll be like hold the key to the victory of this battle but in terms of momo showing up out of nowhere and like borrow breath i have that now i'd be like yeah i don't see that or if he tries it'll just be like a little puff, little puff of smoke or something and nothing else but um yeah that's just talking about the devil fruit that momo's got and a little bit about smiles and vegapunk and caesar and the sad so and uh, Punk Hazard is becoming very relevant in this arc also because of the numbers creation and everything. So even though you know, Punk Hazard has been like covered in the Shino Kuni and everything, it seems to be like we've moved on from it. There's a lot of stuff about that place that's still like, you know, um, mysterious. So we'll see where that goes. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, everybody. This will be Teking and Barry with his fashionable Enma sweater and Clone Barry with the fashionable Christmas sweater design uh, signing out. Hope you guys have a great Thursday.